Hi guys, my name is Manny Rital, and today we'll be reviewing the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is the Coral Edition that I picked up earlier this month. We'll see if this is actually worth the money. We'll talk about specs, gameplay, and everything that you need to know before you get into purchasing this unit yourself. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button to follow up with all new tech content and video reviews that are coming up soon related to Nintendo Switch and other gaming consoles. Nintendo's followed suit with a lot of its competitors by releasing a unit that's cheaper than its flagship. We have the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is about 45% cheaper than the OLED version. Now this obviously comes with cutting costs and some features. Now are these cutbacks too drastic or is this the perfect sweet spot for a handheld gaming device? Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is the Coral Edition of the Nintendo Switch Lite. And the great thing about the Nintendo Switch consoles is that the Lite versions come with all sorts of colors. You got yellow, you got turquoise, you got blue, purple, and a lot of special editions, which the flagship models do not have. Now, this one was actually picked up for $249 Canadian or about $199 USD. Now, I did do a full unboxing of this unit. You can actually find it right here. But to summarize it, it comes with just the unit itself and a power adapter. Does it come with any games or any micro SD cards for expandable storage? Now, talking about the unit itself, it comes with a 5.5 inch LCD 1280 x 720 p resolution. It's about 3.5 inches tall and about 8.5 inches long and only half inch thick. So it feels snug in your hand without it feeling like it's cutting into your palms. So it's a very comfortable hold, even for long gaming sessions. Now, the build of the unit is a little bit different from the OLED version. You don't have a removable controller. You have the analog sticks and the buttons uh, fixed to the display itself, but it comes with all the standard buttons. So your A, B, X, Y, two analog sticks, a D-pad, and you have your bumper triggers at the back. It also comes with a headphone jack, which is an added feature, which is excellent. So if you like a wired headset, that's great. It does also come with a set of speakers at the bottom, stereo. So even for a small unit like this, the sound actually sounds quite phenomenal. And for just keeping the unit cool, there is a vent on the rear, but it's a very, very quiet. I haven't heard the fans go on once. Now, the great thing about this unit is that it also comes with Bluetooth 4.1. So you can actually hook up a wireless headset. And I actually use my AirPods when playing games. And the connection is actually very seamless. No issues whatsoever when doing that. Now, in terms of storage, the unit itself comes with 32 gigabytes of internal memory and you can actually expand it with a micro SD card. There is a slot dedicated for it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't come with a micro SD card in the box, but you can expand the memory up to two terabytes if you can afford a micro SD card with that much storage. Now, one of the great things about the light is that it actually still comes with a physical game cartridge slot. So you can purchase physical games and actually play them on the light. Now, I did mention that this is a step down from the flagship units and a lot of its competitors are doing the same thing with the PlayStation 5 and then you have the PlayStation 5 digital only. You have the Xbox Series X and then you have the S which is a digital only version itself. The drawback to that is that those console units do not get physical media uh, as a way of playing games. But fortunately for the Switch Lite, Nintendo didn't cut those corners. So for people who like to keep physical cartridges and have physical games on them, you are in luck with the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now getting into the font stuff, the gameplay and the gameplay on this unit is actually surprisingly very, very good. Now I did mention that the screen resolution is 1280 by 720 P and some people might think that that's way too low. But remember, this is only a 5.5 inch display. So you actually can't differentiate the pixels when playing the games and the games actually look quite sharp. Surprisingly, the OLED version of the Switch, which is a flagship, also comes with the same resolution, but with a larger screen. So that means that it looks a little more blurry than the Nintendo Switch Lite in terms of pixel count. Now, the LCD display is old technology, but with the right brightness and the right conditions, games still look fluid, and I haven't had an issue so far. Now, in terms of the performance of the games while playing it, I'm getting about 25 to 30 frames per second. Don't expect to get 120 frames per second if you come from the PC end of things or you've been playing the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. Remember, this is a handheld unit, but surprisingly, even at 30 frames per second, the games look great and they feel great. They don't feel slow and they don't feel laggy. There are some games that are made not optimized for the old Nvidia Tegra processor that's in this unit. So you will get some jittering, but personally for the games that I've been playing, I've experienced no lag whatsoever. I've been playing Rocket League, Portal, as well as Fall Guys, and a lot of other NES classics from Nintendo Switch Online, and I haven't had a single frame rate or performance issue yet. 
Now another great thing about the Nintendo Switch Lite is that the game library that's available on the flagship is also available on this version. So it's not like the Nintendo DS days where the newer DS got games and the older ones didn't. The library is not exclusive to any single console. You'll find them on both units. So that is a plus. So if you were worried about, I have to buy the flagship to be able to play all the games, that's not true. Those games will also work on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now in terms of battery life, it depends on the game you're playing. More demanding games will drain out the battery quicker. But personally, I've gotten anywhere from 2.5 to 3.5 hours of gameplay. And I usually set my brightness to the middle. So not low brightness and not super high. So you can expect to have a longer road trip um, without a power adapter and still plow through these games without any issues. But it is less than the flagship or LED version, unfortunately. Now, in terms of game library, like I mentioned before, all games that work on the regular Switch will work on the light. And if you're a Mario fan, there are significant flagship titles for the Nintendo Switch for you to play. The Nintendo Switch was released way back in 2017 and the Lite was released in 2019. So there is actually a pretty significant library available for you to play from. Now, Nintendo does have its own online subscription model, which is a Nintendo Switch Online that gives you access to older generation consoles like the NES, the Super NES, and the N64. The most expensive uh, subscription is about $70 a year which gives you access to all the old N64 games and NES games like I mentioned. Now, it does kind of stop there. It's not as extensive as the PlayStation Plus and the Game Pass that Xbox has. Um, you don't really get access to newer Switch titles. You will have to pay for them. And speaking of paying for them, the games on the Switch are just as expensive as PlayStation and Xbox. So you can expect to pay anywhere from $70 to $80 for a brand new game. So if you purchase the Switch Lite to save money, you will be saving money up front on the console, but you will have to pay it back when purchasing these games. Now, I am really nitpicking here. It's 2023, games are getting more expensive and there's really nothing we can do about it, but that is something to keep in mind. I was quite surprised, like I said, this is my first unit since Game Boy Advance, and I remember way back in the day, handheld games are usually half the price of flagship consoles. But that's not the case anymore, unfortunately. Now, having said all that, there are games available on Nintendo Switch Lite that are free to play like Fall Guys and Rocket League. As a matter of fact, I put so many hours into just those two games alone, and it is absolutely free, like I mentioned. You will have to pay for the Nintendo Switch online to be able to play online with other players, but it's a very small cost to play for a very, very good experience. Okay, so let's talk about some of the drawbacks compared to the regular Switch. And the first drawback is that the controllers are not removable. With the Switch, you can actually remove the controllers and play local multiplayer on a TV. With this, everything is fixed to the unit. There's also no docking. So if you were planning on buying this unit to hook up to a TV and play in a living room, you cannot do that as well. So if that's something that you want to do and that's something you want to do with your family, then unfortunately the light simply can't do that. You have to go a step up and get the Nintendo Switch. But if you just want this unit for regular handheld gaming, every now and then if you're on a road trip and you don't care about local area multiplayer, then the Switch Lite honestly is such a great value. Now the golden question, is the Nintendo Switch Lite worth buying? And I'm gonna have to say it absolutely is. If you just wanna play good old handheld gaming and you wanna play Nintendo's flagship games like Mario, Zelda, and all the other great titles, then the Switch Lite is a great purchase for a very good price point. Now, if you wanna play with your family and friends in a living room and on a TV, you obviously will have to go with a regular Nintendo Switch. But this is a very good unit at a very good fixed price point. So I absolutely recommend this unit to anybody. And that's it for today's video review, guys. If you like the Nintendo Switch Lite or if you plan on purchasing it, put it in the comments below and let me know what color you want. I got the Coral Edition. I got the color because it's the only one that was available, but I've actually come to enjoy it. It's actually a really cool color depending on what light uh, hits it. Sometimes it looks like pink, sometimes it looks like salmon, but it is a great color. Let me know what you guys like. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful. And if you want to look for more content like this in the future, hit the subscribe button because more of it is coming. But until next time, peace.